What's up, everybody? This is Hometown Sessions, episode two. I am Saliarna of Godsmack. Most of you may or may not know me by that name. And we are coming to you live from my vinyl room in my house somewhere in New England. And once again, I have my boy with me, 
Mr. Brian Washburn. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and, as always, we're practicing our social distancing because it's important that we're being responsible. So even though he's here with me, I got to tell you, Brian, if anybody is more freaked out about this thing than most people are because he's in one of the high-risk fast factors, right? Yeah, I, mean, I have asthma. Asthma, yeah. And, uh, and Brian was telling me that um, mm. this whole thing that's been happening right now with COVID and everything is actually playing into one of your worst fears, right? <laughs> yeah, because I get, religiously, I get bronchitis pneumonia once or twice a year. And every time I get it, there's been a couple times where I've been like, all the stupid shit I do in my life, this is going to be the thing that probably takes me out. And now it's front and center it's right because yeah. not covid so much but you were right. always concerned about oh, like yeah. some kind of virus yeah. that was going to attack yeah. your respiratory yeah. Yeah. would come in and that would be the way yeah. you go out right yeah. and yeah. so you're living in your nightmare it is right it's just brought it front and center it's, yeah. Yeah. so um it's uh it, it's interesting because um you know I, I think it's important that we continue to practice social distancing because there are people like you, my daughter, by the way, who's very asthmatic, older people, people with uh, medical conditions and stuff like that. Um, but I also want people to be, you know, optimistic that like this thing's going to pass, we're going to get through it. And I want humanity to get back to humanity because humans aren't designed to not have contact. Man. We have to be intimate. We have to be able to hug and kiss our loved ones and things like that. So, you know, for that reason, um, uh, I, I just really feel that like, it's going to be our responsibility after this passes to, for us to get back to normal and not be too traumatized right. by, cause this isn't the end of the world. Well, I'm, I'm getting that way at first. It's I was, a moment. I wanted nothing to do with anybody now. Yeah, You got to be careful. Uh, I'm getting. Yeah. Well, like they said, we don't right. dictate the timeline. The virus does, exactly. right? We're going to be here every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 PM in my house. We're going to be playing tunes. We're going to be talking to our friends talking to some of our celebrity guests. We're going to be talking about music because that's the thread that runs through the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about life. We're going to be mm -hmm. talking about my issues, your issues, because uh, <laughs> we all know. I got issues. I, I have fucking issues. I, yeah, you probably do. Maybe. <laughs> I, I definitely have some serious issues, man. Yeah. But um, I think what's important um, is that mm. – we're able to kind of like vent them out. And today we're going to be talking to some people that are really kind of having some hard times with what's going on right now because they already had some kind of either mental health illnesses or they're just battling, you know, s certain anxieties or whatever. And this is kind of bringing out the worst in their fears. And we're going to hope to try to help get you guys to relax a little bit and not be so freaked out. Mm -hmm. um, but speaking of issues... Can we talk about the last episode and, <laughs> and you know, what happened? My, my we, deer in the headlight moment? We baked? That, like, well, we, I'll take the fifth on that. <laughs> we, Dude, I have never done this in my life, so I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. People are like, starters. Yeah. People are like, so who's the yeah, creepy guy yeah. in the corner with the red <laughs> the face head. that yeah. hasn't said anything right. the whole 60 minutes? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I've ne like I said, I've never done anything like this in my life, so I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> But I'm people, winging it. People uh, like it. They're rooting for you, man. Oh, good. You're All gonna, right. You're gonna I be, hope to live up to your expectations. Yeah, you're going to be like my Ed McMahon. <laughs> All right. You know? um, but I got to tell you, I want to start by saying that I think this episode might be a little bit emotional today, and we're going to probably take people down an emotional roller coaster a little bit because it started for me today as I was getting notes together, and I'm like trying to figure out what we're going to do. And I had an opportunity to go see Skylar today, my daughter. And because she wanted to have an acoustic in her while she's going crazy in her own isolation, she wanted to start practicing piano and she didn't have her acoustic guitar, which is here. And she lives with her mom, which is about 45 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, of course, I'm going to bring you this stuff. But she's like, you got to be careful, dad, because, you know, I go, I get it. We'll make sure we keep away, you know, six feet apart and that kind of thing. But at least I can bring you this electric piano and, and, and her acoustic so she can at least keep herself occupied. And, um, and I, it was just, it was just as I love that girl so much. And as much as I was so happy to see her, me and her were kind of looking at each other because there was this sadness that we can't just hug. And, ah. you know, I'm, I'm trying to be responsible with it too, because she's like you, she's, she was born with a breathing disorder, which she's very asthmatic mm -hmm. and we don't want her to even risk trying to see if you can oh, be strong right. enough to fight this. Like, I'd rather her just not get it. So that has been going on. And um, uh, it just left me heavy. 
It felt and like so, the boy in the bubble. I'm yeah. In my hell, I'm like, ah. but I, I love. Thank, thank God for technology yeah. today, because at oh, least no we could stay connected, Ugh. and I'm not like not seeing her at all. Yeah. But it's the first time I've seen her a little bit since all this started, and and I was just like, oh. So I came back, and I've been listening to Adele song. <laughs> so you want to hear the song I was listening to? Put it on. Drop the needle. Listen. Hold on. <laughs> It's, it's, you like this yeah, song? I love this song. It's I Miss You. I love I miss you. Listen. 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 That's what it reminded me of. All right. We're not going to go that heavy. That's Adele. <laughs> <laughs> she goes deep. Bring me down. She goes deeper than we do sometimes. <laughs> um, but um, so on this episode, we are bringing in a very um, experienced, uh, licensed mental health therapist. His name is Cliff Fur, And um, he's going to actually offer us some really cool things to some people that are struggling with this that I'm hoping will help them out and get some information from him because a lot of people are handling this in different ways. But um, I think we've all had our issues growing up. You know, we've definitely been scarred in some ways or another. For me, for sure, as we talked about last episode, it was a rough upbringing or whatever. And, but I know I started out normal, right? <laughs> we all start out normal. We started normal. <laughs> So, Everybody starts out normal. So I got a little surprise for you. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to drop this off on you. And by the way, I just washed my hands, so I had an itch on my nose. I can do that. <laughs> it's, my, it's my hand. I'm itching my own nose, and I've washed with soap and alcohol and Purell. Um, I have a surprise for you. I want to call this moment of the opening of this show the Magical Seven. Okay, because I want to show you that I started out as a normal kid. Like, look at, look at that. Yeah. Look, at, look at that. How, how do you deny that smile? <laughs> right? I mean, is that a cute kid? Look That's how normal great. I was. What That's happened great. to me later in life? <laughs> well, go to the next one. Is there another one there? Oh, okay. Oh, my What's God. <laughs> what, the fuck? what the fuck was I? What, who dressed me? What am I, from London, England? What's the knee highs? That's awful. That's great. Oh, my God. My mother needs to seriously... What's with the socks? Look at the socks. That's what I said, the knee highs. Oh, my God. Is there another one? Go. Just go through them. Let's see where we go. Because oh. it went from that. Okay. There's the Ace Ventura. Like, that's the dumb and dumber tooth. But, see, that's I was normal, funny. right? Yeah. And then as, as I got a little older, I started to get into music. And, you know, there's me again with my, oh, my God, look at that drum set. It's, like, so pieced together. But that's when my life took a turn right there. Right there. I went from that. To getting, you know, once music took over, then <laughs> <laughs> things started changing for me. And, uh, and then from there, it just all went downhill because it was like, hi. Bang, yeah, there you, there you go. go. Look at the eyes. Ah, Can I ever yeah, open my eyes? No. I, dude, all I did was still party. Do that. All I did was still... party. No, it's no wonder that I've been scarred yeah. and traumatized. It just, it went from that to just like, okay, who's... <laughs> <laughs> Find Waldo in that picture. Uh, oh. You're yeah. holding up the fridge? Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally fell. Look at him in the background. I fell asleep uh, against the refrigerator with a cigarette in my mouth. That's How's great. that looking? <laughs> so there you go. So anyways, I just wanted to let you know that like, you know, mm. we all have this history and what kind of traumatizes mm. us and scars us. Mm. And for me, I lived that life of, you know, of craziness, but... Um, what do you think? They're on the other side. Of, what do you think of that hair? It's good. You like time. my hair? We all, hey, we all had that moment. <laughs> yeah, you don't think. You, I, know. I know. I know. I remember you I too. Know. I don't remember you as a kid because I didn't meet you until uh, we were in what our twenties. Yeah, yeah. But don't think I don't have crap of you either. You want you want to pull some up, oh, Brian, real quick? Let's see what Brian looks cool. like. Oh, look at the baby cry. <laughs> Oh my God, your teeth. How old were uh, you there? You oh, like a chipmunk. See, so you started innocent too. Right. You started, yep. it was all simple, it's right? The bottom teeth. And then, then went from this, it went to that. Uh, and then, the, <laughs> oh, you're getting a nice gap. I got the gap. Oh my Bats. God, the Cub Scout outfit. Are you kidding me? Look at the curtains. You are a creep. The curtains. And the bangs. Who cut your hair? I don't know. Wow. And then and then and then, then Brian got into music and watch what happened to Brian. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hello, oh, Vince Neil. How you doing? <laughs> How old were you in that picture? I was probably eighteen. Really? Nineteen, maybe. Oh my god, yeah. you look like a little Vince Neil. Nineteen. Oh, you looked like a little Vince yeah. Neil. <laughs> and 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 in case you don't know how to get that kind of hair, I <laughs> saved a picture that helps you get that color. Ready? 
Boom. How you doing? Oh, <laughs> prick fuck. <laughs> so how's that for a little trip down memory lane? You like it? Oh, well, hey. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I have a surprise. All... That's called the magic of seven. Seven right. pictures of me and seven pictures. I think it was seven pictures of you. But, um, yeah, so I guess my point to this is I just want to kind of bring a little uplifting mm. feel to this episode because I know we're going to hit some heavy topics and we're going to get into some real situations. Um, but you never know what's going to happen on the show. That's the right. bottom line, right? right? The bottom line is we're going to sometimes do live performances. We're going to have celebrity guests. I'm going to have some of my friends on here. We're going to get into real talk and not the same old crap that everybody asks me interview after interview after interview because I really don't want to answer the question of like, what's the, what's the question I hate the most? How'd you get the name of the band? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why do they ask that? It's been 20 well, something years and they still want to know how we get the name of the band. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know by now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been out there for tw 22 years in the yeah. press. It's like, so I don't know, but I was inspired today. seeing my daughter. I love her. I love you, Skylar. And, um, I'm glad you're staying safe and healthy and that you have a great mom that's taking care of you while we're going through this crap. Um, and I may even sing for you later, Brian. You never know. I'm just hey. feeling a little emotional, hey. and I think that I could sing. But before we get into that, and what's my signature move? That's the end of that. <laughs> I want to uh, bring in a really special guest that I love dearly. This dude is my brother from another mother, and um, I've known him since longer than you. Yeah. I think we met at some point in 1980. We've been trying to figure this out for a while. It's either like 87 or 88, somewhere in there. Um, he was playing for a band called Wrathchild America. And um, I had always considered myself a pretty good drummer until I seen this yeah. guy. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh my God, I got to take my drums and throw them right <laughs> through the wood chipper because I, I have no showmanship. I had yeah. good chops. I just had no showmanship. Um, and over the years we just kept in touch. And then when the moment was right, I brought him in to this band that has blessed us with a great career. And, uh, please welcome our first guest today, Mr. Shannon Larkin. Are you here with us, Shannon? <laughs> What's hey, up, dude? Hey. <laughs> What's up, my social distancing brother? We're really social <laughs> distance. What's going on, man? How's Florida? Is it hot and cold? What's going on there? It's been brutally hot and awesome. I mean, really? You know, How hot? I well, I think yesterday it peaked at 95 or something. Damn. I'm serious. Oh, that's hot. It was crazy, crazy hot in, in which I, I have all my, I sit around in a, in a dark house. Wow. Because I can't even go outside. I go out and feed my turtles and fish in the morning. <laughs> I swear to God. It's, Before the sun comes up. I, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's literally 85 degrees at, at 10 a.m., man. No shit. Yeah, you know, and what else is, is crazy is that if you don't know this, Shannon lives in a black house in the middle of this yeah. rural wooded area. So, like, he literally painted his house black with a blue door, right? Blue? Yeah, yeah. Big blue, blue door. He's got this cobalt blue, <laughs> like, bright blue door and black house. And I went there, and it's so it's so cool, man. Like, the way he set up his house, he has this crazy koi <laughs> pond and turtle ponds and it looks like uh, from the Karate Kid, like Mr. Miyagi backyard when he sanded the floor and paint the fence and built all the decking and all that stuff. And it's all lit up and it's cool, man. It's definitely a Shannon Larkin house. Oh, but um, hey, dude, how, how are you dealing with uh, the isolation and all that so far? It's just kind of pretty normal for you and Tony, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I can I can definitely feel it. And, uh, you know, I... I still have to do essential things like today I went to uh, the post office. I need stamps. We still have to send our bills out, you know, and I went to get stamps and they had a cool thing where, you know, they only allowed six people in the post office at once. And they had these lines on the floor to make you stay six feet from the person in front of you in line. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, and I thought that was really cool. But then I looked around and out of the six people in the line, only me and, and two others. So half of us had uh, mask and glove on oh, and so man. you know and the other people didn't so i'm urging everybody seeing this you know just just be safe man it's real you know yeah it's a real thing and and the quicker we all realize that this uh do this our job real, yeah do our job man. Right. do the work you yeah know? just do what the government's asking us because that's what i've been trying to <clears> preach <throat> with people is like hey listen man it's a moment we're going through it we get it i'm not one that's super freaked out over it 
but I'm also trying to be responsible to let people know that, you know what, man, it's going to pass. It'll be good. And it's going to be up to us after that to get our humanity back together and not be so freaked out that no one wants to hug and touch and shake hands anymore. I think it's kind of the universe tapping us on the shoulder too, going like, why don't we just smarten up a little bit Pop and like, eyes. don't sneeze in your hand and shake some dude's hand and don't co- not cover your mouth when you're coughing. And there's, there's some little kind of subliminal messages in here. Don't you think? Yeah, man, that's, it's, it's a hundred percent true. You know, I mean, and I'm a hugger, I'm a hugger. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I do. I love, you know, I, I'm a hugger, but you know, I got it. It's just, uh, there definitely will be some paranoia when this thing actually clears up, you know, sure. I mean, Jump but it'll pass it. and that's that's the, that's the good thing is because that's what I'm, my point is it's up to us to get it back together um so shannon just so you know too um we got we're gonna have actually um a guest on in a little bit so in case he comes up and you see him don't get scared because it's uh <laughs> it's all good <laughs> um uh he's a licensed mental health uh therapist and he's going to actually do some really cool things for the people out there and the fans and offer some I don't even want to give it away right now, but it's, it's really cool. But we're focusing today on like the Scars Foundation. And I wanted to let people know that if you're interested in looking into this more because you're having problems with like anxiety, severe depression, addiction, suicide kind of prevention thing, we're, we're looking at all that stuff in, this, in the Scars Foundation. And you can find all the information you want on scarsfoundation.org. But what the Scars Foundation does, it's a new organization. About a year ago, we started, me and the guys in Godsmack, we decided to try to help people on a global level to raise money, to bring awareness to mental uh, health illnesses and things like that. But more importantly, to build a community so we, they have some place to go. So if they're struggling with these kind of things, um, they can go and share their stories and vent a little bit with other people that struggle with this so they can know they're not alone and maybe their stories will inspire others to tell their stories. And that's kind of the purpose behind the Scars Foundation. So it's brilliant, man. I can't stress enough. You know, it's, it's go let it out. It's about getting it out. You know, exactly. and that's, that's the main problem. People keep this inside. It festers inside. And the next thing you know, bad things happen. And it's tough when you're in that space because, you know, you've been there, man. And when you're dark like that, it's like you don't want to talk to anybody and you feel like this, it's never going to stop and you just want to uh, be alone. And it's tough to kind of feel like you're in that conversational mood. You know what I mean? But if you just start the process, even if it means taking a pencil out and writing it down on paper, your feelings, and if it's fuck you, it's fuck you. Like, it doesn't, you don't have to be articulate. You don't have to be a poet. Just like, I hate everything today and I'm feeling like shit and whatever you're going to say and it's all good, but get it out of your body because sometimes just releasing it in any way really helps, you know, you feel a little bit better and then you can get through another day. And so the Scars Foundation is there for you guys. Lean on it, scarsfoundation.org. And um, make sure that, you know, that you um, um, pop your head in there and just kind of hang out with people and see what's going on. And like, as soon as we can get back to normal, we're going to create some events and things like that as well that people can go to. But the reason why I really wanted to have you on today, Shannon, was because I wanted you to hopefully share a little bit of insight with some of the people that are struggling with this moment because they've already had some kind of issues going on. And... I'm going to give you a perfect example, and then I think this will lead you into what you would want to maybe help people understand, because Shannon now, what has it been? You were going on five years sober, right? Well, over four years. Yeah, four so years I'm, and two months. Oh, yep. four years and two months. Cool. Congratulations, man. I'm, you know I'm super <laughs> proud of you. Job. I know. I know. Thank you. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I got your big red gift because I, I was yeah. so proud of you. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a humble guy. I am. It's not, I was just raised that way, but I will, I will shout to the world how proud I am of, of this, this facet of my life being sober. We are all proud of you, man. But so I want to share something with you. A couple people wrote into us already for this episode. And this girl, Kim says that she's an active 12 step program member and that she has issues with anxiety. She has a woman that calls her just because the anxiety makes her feel like she's more prone to a relapse um, because of like the COVID issues and stuff like that making it worse. And she wanted to know if you had any tips for people like that that need to help handle their anxiety so they don't relapse back into um, 
you know, an addictive um, behavior? Well, uh, I, I got some issues happening here with the screen, but can you hear me? So, um, Shannon, so yeah, so you heard that, right? It was from Kim, 12-step program member. She deals with anxiety as it is. Now the COVID's kind of trig triggered her anxiety to be worse, and she's just trying to, I guess, kill time and figure out a way to pass time without having the anxiety build so much that she'll possibly relapse. And I just thought maybe, first of all, can you share a little bit about your journey with this? Because, you know, you were a party guy. Like, you lived your life in as a rock and roll guy. You still do, but, like, you were immersed into all of it, right? The drugs, the alcohol, the whole thing, like a lot of us were. And it was... And you enjoyed being in that space for the most part, you know? And so there's that point where you hit where you, where you know it's getting dangerous and you need to do something. But then there's the other part that maybe feels a little bit sad about leaving that lifestyle, right? Because it's something that like was a friend to you at once. So maybe you can take it. From and there. we, you know, we, we both have, have, have walked that line of danger and, and, and it's, uh, Danger is, is a, an adrenaline rush in itself. And so a lot of times, you know, I would know that I was coming up on that one drink that was going to put me over the edge, but I welcomed it, you know. And so my biggest fear of quitting uh, uh, the alcohol was, the, was thinking that I wouldn't have fun anymore. I wouldn't know how to have fun. And so that's where my anxiety stemmed from. What am I going to do? I'm supposed to be this rock and roller, man. I'm, I'm not... I'm the one throwing the party, you know, and now I'm going to be this sober guy. Everybody going to think I'm a weirdo, you know? So I had lots of anxiety. And what, what I really did was, you know, I found meditation and, and the thing is, you know, it doesn't matter if, 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 if your higher powers is this lampshade, it's whatever you feel is greater than you that you can look to and know that, you know, you can go on and have fun and have a good time in life without any kind of alcohol or drugs as long as you can get your inner self happy. And then to me, it was all about meditation and finding the higher power that I could believe in, something to give me faith to realize that, you know, it's all, it's all within happiness, uh, anxiety, sadness, fear, love. Everything's inside us, you know. If you think of it like we are our own universe, you know, there's the there's the macrocosm, the big universe out there, and then the microcosm, our universe within us. But it's all one. And so to kill anxiety, I found that the, the main thing that I'd start with is pranayama, which is breathing exercises. And then you just focus on that, and you'll find that all your problems start to fade away as you focus and focus within on your breath. Just your breath. It sounds simple. It is simple. Just focus on your breathing. You can count four in, eight out. It's it's a yogic technique, you know. And you don't have to, when I say yoga, I don't mean like all these like crazy pretzel asanas and new ways of sitting <laughs> that are uncomfortable, man. I'm talking yoga of the mind, you know. Yes. And that's that's where I think people really need to go within. Hey, therapy works. I cannot say a bad thing about therapy. I went to rehab to get over my you know, to try and get over the hump of yeah. when I when I hit my bottom and I was thinking, I'm going to die. Either I'm going to die or I'm going to lose everything I love, including you, the band, yeah. and not let alone family, friend, everything. I knew it. Yeah. And so I, I had to make that decision. That's a hard thing to do. Look in the mirror. Admit to yourself you have problems. I'm an alcoholic. You know? Yeah. And when, once you get over that, though, the anxiety will not go away unless you can figure out how to calm yourself from within. And the only answer I have for that and to this, this what lady is uh, meditation. Yeah. And give it, give it a shot, man. Now that you're better, Shannon, right? And now that you're sober and now that like you're clear, like you're a completely different person than, than what you were when I first met you. But all of us are because we all kind of grown up and, and eradicated a lot of that stuff from our lives because we knew there was no happy ending to it, right? I mean, it was just, we were full tilt or it was, you know, it was on or it was off. There was no regulating. All, you know I mean? all or nothing. Yeah, you know, I, I remember we, me and Shannon. I remember me and Shannon going through a case of wine in North Miami. And and our assistant Kevin got up the next morning and he was like, Did you guys have a party last night? And we're like, No. 
why? And he's like, because there's a trail of empty wine bottles that go from the kitchen all the way out to the swimming pool. And yeah. I don't remember seeing any cars in the driveway. I'm like, oh, it was just me and Shannon talking all night. Yeah. I mean, eight, six, eight bottle, whatever. It was insane. But uh, yeah, you know, somebody just called me, a, a buddy of mine called me yesterday and wanted to talk with this, uh, this pandemic. He, he's stuck at home, of course, has no job now, you know, and was, was really starting to question if he has a problem with alcohol and drugs, you know. And so he reached out to me, you know, this is a buddy of mine that lives here in Florida. And, and you know, my, my, my advice was, uh, was simply to first try and, 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 you know, regulate like every minute of your day and make a plan for your day, especially now that we're trapped in here. You know, and it's not as easy as it sounds, but try and plan, plan out your day. Yeah. And that'll give your mind something to occupy itself firstly in the first thing of the day, you know, plan out yeah. your day and then try and stick on a schedule. Make yourself be schedule oriented throughout this because see, most people go to work. And so even if they, you know, they don't worry about really having a, an alcohol or drug problem because they get up at say, you know, whatever it is, 637 in the morning and they got to be at work at 839 or whatever. They're there throughout the day. They don't have most normal people don't have alcohol and drugs all around them, you know what I mean? And then when they get home, usually there's there's a, a significant other there or wait for or whatever, and they, they'll have a, a beer or three and then go and it's, it's life. It starts all over again. So there's really no room. Now there's all kind of room to just abuse ourselves and abuse alcohol and drugs, right? right? So to me, it's all about making a plan, man, and knowing that it's out there. And so... I, even myself, who I'm recovered, I'm a, I'm an alcoholic. I always will be. You know, it's not who I am; it's what I am. So, uh, but I will. I I'm recovered. Do you see? And so, that doesn't mean that I'm safe. I still have to make a plan. And so each day, and you know, oh, by the way, you know, cigarettes gone, bro. Yeah. It's been, it's been like three months now. Nice. Three months. And nice. that was his heart. That was that's hard a, that's the one. that's a tough one, dude. I kicked that too a year ago, and that is a hard one. Well, you're the reason. I mean, you know, I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. Damn it, you know, it's always been we've had that thing. You know what I mean? Totally. So and so, God, we, Sully and I, by the way, have quit together over the last 18 years, probably five, six yeah, times. Yeah, that was miserable. We made uh, yeah, everybody miserable on tour for a long time. I think Kevin was going to quit at one point. Our assistant, yeah, he's yeah. like. He went out and bought us a carton of cigarettes, actually. Remember that? He was like, yeah. Shannon's on the phone walking, yeah, pacing yeah. back and forth, picking up lint and putting it in an ashtray. And like, I'm sitting there on the computer and I'm watching him go back and forth. And finally, I'm just like, dude, will you please sit down? And Kevin's just like, there you go. Two packs of cigarettes for each of you. Smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's a great example, man. Like For what's going on now in this country and everybody's sitting around all of a sudden, it's just like quitting smoking. It's something that's gonna it's 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 gonna eat at you, totally. and so you have to distract. You have yes. to distract. Come up with a plan, tools, distraction. You yeah. know, yeah. I say yoga. Also, reading, read books, man. Yeah. Watch movies. Some people are a little bit things. wiry, more wiry. I happen to be one of those people that sometimes have a hard time going. So what I do is I create. TV studios in my house <laughs> and I have my friends yeah. on and I just do this like NBC production thing because I'm bored. But I also want to just though, say, oh God. Yard work. Yeah, yard work, right. Yard but, work. But even to elaborate on that, I was going to say that how many people before COVID hit, okay, and pay attention to this, everybody, were always saying like, oh, I never get to see my kids. I, never, I work too much, blah, 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 blah. I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Well, guess what? The universe just tapped you on the shoulder and said, here you go. You got two or three months to enjoy your family and friends, and most of you are going to get paid for it. And what are you going to do with it? So why don't you spend some time with your family too? Even if you have to FaceTime your mom and all that stuff, that's part of killing time. Plan out your day. Keep in touch with your support team, and that's how we're going to get through this thing because we're coming back, and Godsmack is on deck for 21 yeah. with a new record and a big tour. So we're coming back full force. I promise you, man, Shannon, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for taking some time today, yeah. man. I know that, uh, yeah, you're way down there and we're way up here and we haven't been able to get together yet to actually write, you know, music and that kind of thing, but we're going to, I know you and Tony have been grinding away. 
And, and you um, know, we all we all have plenty of time, you know, to do, like you said, be with family, do something creative, yes. get some work done, get that closet cleaned out that you've been talking about for the last three years or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm literally getting stuff done yes. that, that I, I haven't even thought of doing, you know, and and being able to do other things and, you know, like listen to music. Like you talk about, you know, the vinyl thing, man, yep. now yep. I'm. I'm listening to records and stuff. Dude, before you go, show us your vinyl room real quick. Show right. it to us. I know yeah. it's probably dark and gloomy in there, but it's all psychedelic right. and cool. And look at all this, right. man. His vinyl room is way cooler than mine. I got to step it up. Come on, show us the love. Oh, my God. Look at this place. <laughs> that is a killer psychedelic vinyl room. Nice. This, is, this is my newest album that I got. It's the Exorcist soundtrack. Tilt the camera down a little bit. Oh, there you go. Oh, my God. Floating, and it's exorcist. But look at this vinyl. It's beautiful. I'll hold it up uh, like this. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Right? Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> that's killer. Show us the room. Give us the long shot real quick. One more time. Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. There you go. Face it right down there. Let's get it. Look at that. Oh my God, yeah. that's killer! You don't, you don't, you do not need drugs nope. to trip in that room. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this room is his own trip. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Hey, man, it's awesome seeing you. I miss you, man. I love you so much, and I can't wait to get together with you guys and get some music written for next year. So stay healthy, I I stay can't safe. Wait. Thanks, man. Stay what's up to the uh, to the old lady for us, and um, <laughs> I'll hit you back soon, man. All right, love you, man. See you, love Brian. You, bye, Peace bye. out, man. Peace. Take care. Pat and Kamal, the guys behind the scenes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See you, man. Have a good one. So, man, I got to tell you, you know, that is one of the dudes that I love the most because that me and him have been through hell and back together, mm -hmm. seriously. And we've been touring forever. And it really is one of those things where you just get caught up in it, you know, and it can spin you out of control. And I just, I just got to say that I'm just so proud of that dude, man, because if you knew the year he went through last year, which you do, yeah. you were part of that whole thing yep. we did with him with the Impala. Yep. He, um, he had it rough, man. And I really thought he was going to relapse. I, I just had a feeling he was going to go, mm -hmm. fuck it. I'm just, I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. So, um, we want to, uh, bring in our next guest right now. He is a licensed mm -hmm. mental health therapist um, and we are hoping he's going to help us have some insight on a lot of these, um, problems that people are facing right now and their fears and that kind of thing with, with mental illness and, uh, mental health and, and being afraid of this COVID thing and isolation and how they're freaking out a little bit more than normal. Um, uh, I want to bring in Clifton fur. Is it fur Clifton? Are you there Cliff? Yeah, I'm here. Up, Sorry. It, that, that was cl close enough. Uh, I'm good. How are you? How do you Clifton pronounce your last fair? name? Like a like Carnival and Fair. So Fair. Oh, Fair. Clifton Fair. Yeah, yeah. That is a nice yes, sir. name. And Thank where, you. where are you Appreciate at right that. now, Cliff? Uh, right now I'm in South Florida, uh, in Hollywood, Florida. Oh, wow. So um, he's actually right next to Shannon. We yeah. just got off with my drummer and he's in uh, the North Fort Myers area. Aha. Uh, okay. Know the area. On the other side, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Cliff, we've been talking about um, the Scars Foundation and how we developed it, and what a little bit about what that was about. How we're we're just a you know ordinary rock band that had a lot of issues, you know, growing up in our childhoods and becoming successful in music, and how that success kind of freaked us out and we easily spun out of control through our own addictions and behavioral pattern patterns and things like that. And, um, and although we love what we do and we love the party and we love the music, you know, it does get to a point where it kind of trips you upside down and you have to know when enough is enough and maybe when it's time to call it quits. Cause you know, that partying thing that starts when you're younger is something you do when you're young and you think you're cool. And then sometimes it becomes a habit. And the next thing you know, you have a real problem trying to to get rid of it. And so for us being rock stars and things like that, it, you can imagine, you know, you have a party every night backstage and you got women throwing mm -hmm. yourselves at you and you got drugs and alcohol everywhere. And it's just very easy to fall into that pattern. Um, and more importantly for me, 
what it triggered when I was younger. I was in my very early 20s, 21, I think. Um, and I used to be a smoker. And I was coming home from rehearsal one day, and I just remember flicking my cigarette out the window. I was done with it. And I got this really weird sensation in my chest, and it turned into this disoriented woe. And then all of a sudden, I had this crazy, what I know now to be a panic attack. But at the time, I was thinking, oh, my God, am I one of these unfortunate young guys that has a heart condition? And because no one would tell me I had a heart condition, EKG after right. EKG, the doctor's like, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. Like, you're going through right. panic attacks. Um, yeah. I was convinced that I really had some problems. And I had, me and Shannon were just discussing, he was saying how he has a bunch of tools in his toolbox that he pulls out to help him get through his anxiety and stuff as he became sober and those moments that we hit. And for me, it was like, I just had to prove myself first that, okay, it's not my heart. It's not a medical condition that calling it anxiety, whatever that means. So if it would start to happen, I would get on the ground, I would do push ups, or I'd go for a run and I'd sprint. Cause I wanted to prove to myself, first of all, that it wasn't my heart. Right. So I wanted to ramp it up right. and make sure nothing was going to break. If I'm going to have a heart attack, then let's get on with it. You know what I mean? But if right, not, right. it was like that. That's how scared I was all the time. And it literally alienated me for years because I was in, in and out of emergency rooms for two years because of severe anxiety. Um, and so I thought maybe we could start there and you could help some people maybe understand what you're experiencing as a therapist with some of your patients and how they're handling this isolation and how it's maybe triggering some of their illnesses even more and their fears and things like that. And, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about um, what you do and how you're handling it in these times. So uh, thank you again, Sully, for having me on. Uh, I, I, uh, I, really, I really wanted to point out a few things that you actually already spoke about. And, you know, you spoke about being surrounded by people and, you know, whether there was a, you know, those were some negative uh, situations that came out of it or, um, or maybe even some positives, a lot of positives. Congratulations on all your success. But what I'd like to uh, mention to you know any of the listeners is that it's really important that we always surround ourselves with a good, healthy support system. And it sounds like you have that today. Um, it sounds like you really worked to actually establish that. And I believe for the most part, all of us do have healthy people around us in some way, shape, form, or fashion that are interested in us and are willing to actually help direct us in the you know in the right direction whenever we're going through the anxiety, the panic attacks, the substance use, um, you know, law, grief and loss, things like that. Um, so leaning on those people that we have around us, a, b, whenever you're going through something, let's say you know some of my clients are actually going through the depressive episodes, they're going through you know, some type of grief and loss because of the fact that they have people that have been directly affected by, you know, COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, and definitely they feel that sense of loss with not being able to get out of the house and, and maybe connect with their loved ones, older, younger, um, or even their peers in the same, uh, the same way that they used to. So my encouragement to them is to, A, pick up the phone. I mean, that's a traditional method. Pick up the phone. We got, we got, we got FaceTime. Today's Zoom is blowing up. You know, I mean, for the professionals out there, Doxy Me, if you just want to get on with some of your peers in the field, you know, use Doxy Me. It's a medical, it's, it's for medical providers. But um, there's so many different ways to actually kind of get beyond some of the anxiety and, and the depression and the claustrophobia that's coming from um, the uh, the social distancing and the, uh, the the isolation that's happening. Um, I, Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it, because it, it really is scary for, for a lot of people right now, but I, I also have been trying to encourage, and you know, you're more of an experienced professional in, in your, in your um, profession. And I just want to make sure too, that I'm not out of line at times by just trying to help encourage, you know, people being optimistic as well, because I also want to remind people that, this will pass, right? We've had things like this in the past. We've had SARS. We've had the swine flu. We've had different things. They just haven't tracked it as heavily as they've tracked this. And I know that this is dangerous and can be and that it's more contagious. But at the same time, I was trying to encourage people that when this passes, because they will get a handle on it, there will be, I believe there'll be a vaccine for this. And I believe that we will work hard to get our economy back and we will, we will get back to it because we've been banged over the head pretty hard here. But at the same time, 
I think it's going to be up to us and how we conduct our behavior on how humanity gets back to being humans, how, how we get back to having contact with each other and that kind of thing. I don't want people to be so freaked out that when this is over, that they stay in that tragedy, they stay in that trauma so long that they, you know, I, I refuse to believe that it's going to change the world forever. You know, I don't think this is Armageddon. And I think that like, we're going to get it back. There will be a healing process for sure. 2020, I've already wiped it out as like, it's a rehabilitation year, you know, we'll eradicate right, right. the virus. We'll do it. I'm, I'm sure that will happen and we will start to get back to work. But you know, you get a cut, you put a bandaid on it. The bandaid comes off. There's a scab, the scab falls off. There's a little scar. It gets itchy. The scar fades. There's a process that's going to happen, right? There, there's yes. going to be, we're going to get, we're going to get back to it. People are going to be a little shell shocked, not want to be around crowds right away. There's also going to be like, maybe I'm not going to go to a sporting event or concerts, even if there are any yet, because I need to replenish my savings account a little bit. So there will, there'll be some rehabilitation after this as well. Don't you think? Absolutely. I, I believe you're spot on with that. Um, you know, easy does it is a, uh, is a phrase or, uh, that I've, I've heard in several uh, different walks of, uh, of life. And I, I would offer the same thing to any of the listeners. Um, you know, it, it will take some time for us to reacclimate to uh, this time because it's 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 different, you know, and just like any difference that we're experiencing, you know, within the world itself. I mean, we've been through things where we've had to make adjustments. You know, all of us have experienced something in life where we've had to actually overcome it, uh, whether it's a mental health issue or whether it's uh, just, you know, moving, moving to a different city. Like we've had to make adjustments before, you know, if we continue to, um, be paralyzed by, you know, what's coming or what's in front of us now, then I could definitely see some maladaptive behavior coming up uh, where that anxiety gets heightened. You know, people start becoming uh, agoraphobic or, you know, those are some Addiction, of the addictions, suicides. It, right, I mean, there's been different things just, on the rise here for sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but we, and, you're right though. I mean, I think it's part of like, you know, me and you were having a discussion yesterday a little bit and we were talking about how you got to kind of face the monster, right? Don't let these things yeah. spin out of control. Don't let this event trigger it to be worse for you than it needs to be. We're all kind of isolated. We're all going through this annoying thing because that to me is what it is. It's an annoyance. It's like I'm so annoyed by it. I just want it. Well, you just it's a pest that I want to just like, you know, it's a bully. Brush it's off. a bully. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we can't yeah, let you want to turn around and win. punch in the face. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. You know, I, one of the things that I just like to add to Sully is like, you know, I spoke about that support system and the people that are in my life, that are in your life, that are in all our lives. Like, hopefully they're telling you, you know what? OK, like this is getting a little a little strange. Like right now, you're kind of stepping outside of the norm for your behavior. Why don't you go talk to a professional? Why don't you go? You know, why don't you go to the doctor if you're actually having those panic attacks? Let them check you out. And if not, then you get directed to another professional, maybe able to do some talk therapy. So well, absolutely. Well, but Try let's talk about that a little bit too, because people right now are a bit freaked out to go to a doctor. They don't want to go near a hospital because Ooh. it's like, there's that going on? And there's really not like yourself, therapists doing one-on-one -on -one in the same room because people are kind of like, I really don't want you to breathe on me right now. You know, this <laughs> right. <that>. so, <laughs> you know, we, we have to, we actually even got some questions for you and I'll get to those in a second, but some of the people are asking like a little bit of advice on like, what do you do in these kind of situations when certain things have been taken away from you that were your safety zones, you know, we're mm -hmm. in the tree mm -hmm. with the nest and safe and the thing. <laughs> so Whenever you have those things taken away from you, it's really important that I, and I, I said this earlier, like you remember that you've, you've had things taken away from you before, you know, and you spoke about that with some of the ailments that we faced as a nation, uh, SARS uh, and so forth and so on. And we found a way to overcome that yeah. just like we will find a way to overcome this today. Yes, I agree. You know, I always tell people the native Americans have the saying, and that is this too shall pass. Nothing lasts forever, I love man. It. So I love it. Hey, Cliff, love tell us a little bit about um, you have a organization called the Human Experience Associate. Yeah. You want to tell yes. us a little bit about that? So uh, through that organization, we actually work with executives. We work with uh, the community. Uh, we also do uh, we do that in a myriad of ways. Uh, we do individual coaching. We do uh, therapy, uh, both individual and group. 
Um, we also do some work within the not-for-profit sector as far as uh, a couple of the therapists that are working within the organization. Um, it's it's been up and running, but we're just kind of like moving in that direction uh, where we just it's it's all out. Let's see how big uh, we can how big of an imprint we can make on the community uh, as far as uh, therapeutic interventions and uh, coaching. Oh, so, awesome. That's really great, man. And, and we put up your uh, Instagram handle on the screen as well. That way people can get in touch with it and get in touch with you if they need to. And, you know, we want to really wish you the best of luck with that because we need people like you in our lives right now, for sure, to lean on that have, you know, experience with, with people that face trauma and fears and things like that. And it's important that we, you know, have you. What, what is also MPI, My Life, My Power, International Preparatory Academy? So My Life, My Power International Preparatory Academy is a, a school for uh, 12 year olds to 18 year olds. And they, they are uh, allowed an opportunity to come into this preparatory academy to actually get prepared for college. They're usually working in the, like the maybe at, we'll say a certain 20%, right? There's a certain 20% that really kind of struggles to make that respective adjustment within the classroom or the traditional educational system. Um, so they are really given an, a shot and an opportunity to come into the preparatory academy, get the tools they need in order to go forward and uh, actually go into college, get some additional training and trade, um, and, and just have the life that they maybe thought was impossible. Cliff, I got to tell you, man, you have been an amazing guest and I really appreciate all your advice and all your experience. And I really hope that people will come and visit you and, and look you up and make sure that they stay connected if they need to. And I also want to mention that Cliff has offered something pretty amazing. I've been waiting to say this for this whole episode, <laughs> but Cliff has graciously offered to do two hour sessions, five days a week. Are you paying attention, Brian? Yep. Two hour sessions five days a week if you are a part of the scars foundation facebook group and cliff has offered to do it free of charge that is unbelievable and i really really hope that if you are not a part of this community yet go to the scars foundation facebook group and cliff is going to be working with us and doing two hour sessions a day, five days a week for free, just so you have someone to lean on, get some advice from, hopefully get steered in the right direction and start relieving some of these pressures, these fears, these illnesses, these anxieties, and get you to a better place. So when this is all said and done, which will come soon, then you know we can all feel a little bit stronger and a little bit better about getting back to our lives and getting to the next steps because we all have more work to do on this planet, don't we? Yes, we do. 100%. Well, thank 100%. you for, for coming on board, man. We'll be in touch soon and good luck with everything. Stay healthy, stay safe. I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Sully. I do want to send one last shout out if I can, please, sure, please, please. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, Face the Music Foundation. Uh, wanted to just say thank you to them. Uh, that's also a not-for-profit that we're currently doing work in the communities and trying to get out there as much as we can uh, to touch base with some of the kids that are really kind of struggling with finding their voice, dealing with any respected bullying, and also working on uh, uh, just building up some of their self-esteem. Yeah, that's just for just to kind of support them in the local on the ground floor um, as much as we can. So awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I hope we get a chance to speak to as many people as you've been able to reach today. Sully, thank you for having me on. Thanks. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. Stay safe. All right. Take care. You too, Sully. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye, Brian. Man, I, I what an amazing guy, right? And how yeah. about giving all this free time to the people? Like That's, that's awesome. That's pretty cool, man, because yeah. we're in a crazy time right now. But I'm optimistic, and I'm going to stay that way. I really don't believe this thing is going to change our world forever. I know we got to be responsible and we will be, but we're going to get to the other side of it and we're going to get back to being humans, man, because that's what's important, right? The economy, being able to have human contact. And so for now, it's just a moment, annoying, but whatever. <sighs> this is emo I've been emotional. It's heavy stuff. This was a lot <laughs> today. You know? I got to see my daughter. That was emotional. Yeah. I'm fucking listening to Adele. Well. 
because I'm just <laughs> emotional today. We had, you know, Cliff on Shannon. It was great seeing yep. Shannon, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Good. I love that dude. Yep. Um, but we are going to be back every Tuesday and Thursday, you guys. So if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking for someone to hang with, every Tuesday and Thursday right here, 6 p.m., we're going to just um, have some fun, talk to some people, play some music. we got to start reviewing music. As a matter of fact, I'm feeling a little bit inspired because of my emotions. So I, I think I want to play a song. I'm going to play a song. All right. What are you going to do? Hey, where you, what are you, hello. hello. Where are you going? What are you doing? Oh, hey. Uh, I'm going to play oh. a song. Hold All on. right. Free show. Hey, you ready? Inside of my